Hi, my name is Valerie Leonard. I work with nonprofit organizations and I help them make a stronger impact in their communities. I want to take a few minutes to talk to you today about nonprofit survival tactics in the age of recovery. This is the second of a three part series. In part one, we talked about the questions we should ask ourselves while doing this work. We also looked at the state of Illinois' economy in 2015, taking into account trends and key economic indicators for the state of Illinois. We also talked about what this means to you as a nonprofit leader. And in part two, we're going to talk about what's happening in the nonprofit sector, what your peers are doing, and how grant makers are responding. So what's happening in the nonprofit sector? A 2010 survey of Donors Forum's partners indicated that 71% of organizations reported budget decreases in 2009. About two-thirds of the nonprofits reported decreases in operating reserves. 63% only had three months or less cash reserves on hand. That means if they didn't get another dime, they would have had to close their doors within three months. Only 11% had more than a year's worth of cash reserves. And mind you, this was back in 2010. I can imagine that the situation is much worse now that we have a budget impasse and a number of our organizations are depending on the state for funding. About 44% of nonprofits reported reductions in their number of full-time paid staff compared to 19% in 2008. And I want to add that there was a period where they did bounce back, but again, under the current scenario where we have a budget impasse and no budget has been passed, a number of organizations are experiencing serious distress and have had to close their doors. 41% of the organizations reported decreased ability to meet service demands due to reduced funding and increased need. This is up from 22% in 2008. 68% reported reduced foundation giving, and 63% reported decreases in corporate sponsorships. 62% reported declines in government funding, which led to cash flow problems. And of this amount, more than half reportedly experienced delayed payments from the state of Illinois. So when we look at what your peers are doing, a number of them are going through cost reductions. And we got this information from the National Council of Nonprofits. We find that all across the country, folks are adding new methods of giving, and that includes um, things like social media. They are renting out their facilities. They're negotiating in-kind barter exchanges they're raising their fees, they're cutting staff positions, they're reducing work hours or making more flexible work hours, they're reducing employee benefits, they're scaling back plans for growth, they're reducing travel and professional development budgets, freezing salaries, eliminating non-essential expenses, canceling special events, using reserve funds, and they continue to operate in a deficit mode. And when we look at the strategic management initiatives, many of them are renegotiating contracts, trying to get better terms. They're increasing their fundraising capacity, especially as it relates to individual donor programs, because that's really the, the area of highest growth, as you could see in part one. They are requiring active board involvement in stewardship and fundraising. They're preparing worst case scenarios when they do their budget and their strategic plans. They're reviewing and revising financial controls, increasing their marketing, increasing outsourcing so that they don't have to pay as much money in benefits. They're replacing full-time staff with part-time staff and interns. They're relying more heavily on technology, partnering with other organizations to deliver programs and services, reduce duplication of staff, and they're increasing their efficiency. So basically, they're probably going through a series of performance management initiatives.
in order to save money and improve efficiency. They're also lengthening the timeline and time frame for their implementation for their strategic plans. So strategic plans that may have been three years, they're probably stretching some of the milestones out to year four and year five, hoping that the conditions are better for them to to actually start the initiative. They'll have more resources, hopefully. So how are grant makers responding? Again, the same 2010 survey of donors form members, and so these are the philanthropic partners, uh, it indicated that 90% of the grant makers agreed that the economy had at least some impact on their grant making activity. So this was back in 2010, and mind you, the economy has um, bounced back, so we're in a very slow growth mode at this present time, 2015. About half of donors form members reported decreases in their giving levels in the past 12 months compared to 32% in the 2008 survey. And if we were to take this survey again, we would probably find that they're starting to increase their giving, you know, especially now that the state has closed their door, or well, not really closed their doors, but now that the state has a budget impasse and it's had a negative impact on a number of organizations so a number of your philanthropic agencies are stepping in but there's really not enough money from you know from <clears throat> the private sector to cover the need so back in 2010 37% anticipated reductions in grant making for 2010 and we see that that's been reversed now um People are giving more, but again, it, it's really difficult for organizations that also depend on state funding. And only 20% anticipated increases in grant making for 2010. So grant makers are saying, you know, this was back in 2010, we'll focus on fewer projects and priorities, but intend to make stronger commitments in those areas. And, and this attitude has pretty much prevailed, even though the economy has turned around. We've become much more strategic in selecting grant recipients, and we also plan to strengthen relationships and partnerships with grantees. Grant makers are emphasizing nonprofit sustainability. About 42% of the grant makers indicated that they had increased their efforts to support nonprofit capacity building and sustainability in the past year. They were most likely to provide support for things like technical assistance strategic planning, board development, emergency assistance, strategic volunteering, in-kind donations, facilitating collaborations, and even facilitating mergers. There's a lot of consolidation in this current environment. So this brings part two to a close. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. I'm at 773 Five seven one three eight eight six, and if you will tune into part three, you will find ten strategies that we give you for weathering the storm. Take care. Bye bye.